Hi everyone, I'm Rick Blackwell for the Education Network and this is Good Sports, the best in Palm Beach County School District Sports, Arts and Academics. I hope you're having a great start to your summer. Here's what's coming up today on Good Sports. Give them a hand. We're going to show you how fifth graders at Crystal Lakes Elementary School put on an incredible puppet performance. They write the script, build the sets and the puppets and star in the show. We'll also look at planting the seeds to improve healthy eating in our students. The elementary school that grows their own food and in doing so helps their students grow. And the grant from the Department of Education that allows educators to go back to the drawing board. It's the professional development that is making a difference in the classroom. And we're here at Lake Worth Middle School outside the Barry Gruno Gymnasium. Barry Gruno was killed by a student 16 years ago this month and a scholarship has been set up to honor his legacy. There's Barry, There's Barry. right there in the classroom. That's kind of a, a good shot of him. Doing what it? he did best. Jeff Neal, Marianne Hedrick and Allison Moe come together in the gymnasium named after Barry Gruno at Lake Worth Middle School to share stories about their friend. You could just see his enthusiasm every day um, when he walked into that classroom. And he was selfless. I mean, mm -hmm. all of his students knew that he cared about them and he, he wanted the best for them, no matter what their situation. And he got to know his students, I think, to one on one, mm -hmm. which is so important in education today, to not just touch their lives and teach them, but to truly know what kind of person they are and to make them feel important and to make them feel that they can do whatever they want and inspire them. And his friends that I got to know that grew up with him who knew him a lot better than I did, they, they said that we used to call him the Gandhi of Lake Worth. And, uh, <laughs> he was like, when you said he's selfless, he really was that guy. And uh, he loved teaching, he loved Lake Worth. He, he was that, that person that, and I think he made all of us that worked with him, especially after he passed, want to be better teachers. And he had children literally just hanging on every breath, he said. Like the they pipe just pipe. looked, they would walk down the hall like at a mass, just yeah. attentive to him for everything he said. Yeah. Because he was such a great teacher, family member, and friend, these three have dedicated themselves to helping keep Barry's legacy alive. They pledge to do whatever they can to help the Barry Gruno Memorial Scholarship. We hope to just grow and make more students um, aware of it, more students to actually apply for it and hopefully raise more money so that we can help more students in getting to college and living their dream of becoming a teacher. Saban Virgils is one of the 112 Palm Beach County students who have benefited since the start of the scholarship. Saban used the scholarship money to attend Florida A&M University. She is now the award-winning band instructor at Bear Lakes Middle School in West Palm Beach. Saban, inspired by Barry Gruno. Hop, ten, hot! One, two, three! She now inspires her students. Every day, we say what? We are somebody. I am somebody, right? And if you are somebody, what? Give it your all, all the way to the end. Barry Gruno still making a difference in the lives of Palm Beach County students 16 years after his death. And that's why these three educators work so hard to promote the Barry Gruno Memorial Scholarship. It's a real art to be a teacher and he, he mastered it. And if they want to be an educator, if they could remember, you know, how passionate he was about his subject area. He used to dress up in a, in a toga when they're doing Greek mythology. I mean, he just, he did so many innovative things and, and created relationships with kids. And uh, if, if they want to be a teacher, or to think they got some money from that type of person, that's what I you know, would try to tell them what kind of teacher he was and what kind of person he was. This past year, five students received a total of $10,000 in scholarships, money they will use to attend college with the hope that they can also be a great teacher, like the man whose name is on their scholarship. I just don't want people to forget. The guy was an excellent teacher. He, he brought sunshine to this school. He brought sunshine to the lives of the, the kids he taught. They loved reading. They loved being in his class. I don't want his wife to forget. I don't want his kids to forget. So I've got a little extra time on my hands, so I'm willing to keep that legacy alive. Great job, Marianne. And the entire Barry Gruno Memorial Scholarship Committee 
you are truly making a difference. Now, if you'd like to apply for this scholarship, students will be judged based on financial need, grades, leadership, and community service. And you have to have the intention of entering college to become a teacher. If you would like to help the Barry Gruno Memorial Scholarship Fund, you can participate in the annual golf tournament. This year's tournament will be held at Sand Hill Crane Golf Club on North Lake Boulevard in Palm Beach Gardens on October 29th. It's a great day of golf. Here are some pictures of the event in 2015. Now, thanks to the golfers, the Barry Gruno Memorial Scholarship Committee has awarded $166,250 to local students. To play in the tournament, it's $100 per person, $375 for a foursome. Fees include breakfast, golf, and cart fees, lunch, beverages, awards, and prizes. Once again, the fun takes place on Saturday, October 29th. If you'd like more information, go to active.com and type Barry Gruno into the search. Once again, that's active.com. And all you have to do is just type Barry Gruno into that search tool for more information. Well, there's a great teacher over at Crystal Lakes Elementary School. Every year, she has her kids put on a puppet show. Let's show you some of the highlights. Just like these puppets, the students here show tremendous growth throughout the school year. Now, back in August, each fifth grader designs the puppet they want to create. They visit the dollar store for materials. Yarn, feathers, fleece turn an idea into an actual character. A mop is used to create a head of hair. You need to go to school to learn, yeah! The students then write a play, which will bring their puppets to life. They also create sets and backgrounds. Nine months later, a puppet performance with no strings attached. Anyway, back to Black House, why can't we just put our locker and take out the Every student backstage has their hand involved in this show. Overseeing everything, teacher Kathleen Sakasis, better known as Miss KT. She's been an educator since 1982. She's had her students put on a puppet show the last 12 years. This year, the children came up with a 40-minute presentation called Whatever You Do, Don't Panic. They created the dialogue, which helps kids deal with the pressures of homework, testing, and going to middle school. No panic backstage. Everyone has a job to do, and they do it well. The audiences love the entire production. The kids will perform the show 12 times for every child at Crystal Lakes Elementary School and then for family and friends. For putting together the script, the set, and the puppets, give Miss KT and all the kids major props. And now a story from KEC Canal Point Elementary School where they're seeing so much growth in the classroom and in the garden. First of all, we did it from ground up. There was nothing here. Everything you see here, we built it. We cleared the ground. It was just green grass. We cleared it out. We mulched it, brought the kids out. It's so fun to have them come out and see what they've done themselves to bring it up. And now we grow these different vegetables and these guys are able to harvest and see exactly how it grows and go straight to the table and get the sample. The students have an opportunity to eat everything they grow. This spring on harvest day, they cook the vegetables on campus and serve them to the students. The main thing is learning to eat healthy. That's the number one goal, learning to eat healthy. These guys, we grow eggplant. Some of these guys have never tried eggplant. We tell them the benefits of eggplant, the benefits of collards, the benefits of cabbage, the benefits of green beans, things that they normally would not eat because a lot of our kids are eating a lot of junk food nowadays. So to be able to tell them and show them exactly and give them, give them different recipes on our harvest day to show them that this is, a, this is an excellent way to eat this stuff, it, it, it makes all the difference. Physical education teacher Tedrick Patterson works with pre-K through fifth graders in the garden. Turn in the dirt. Just turn it, turn it. Yes, we need I like it. This. That's right. Yeah. Then we get the new growth. Each student has a job in the garden. Some get their hands dirty. Others water the collard greens and green beans. Just, just the enjoyment from the kids. Just how they enjoy it. I enjoy it. You know. At first, I looked at it as a task, but once the kids got involved and really got into it, I really, you know, I, I've started my own little garden. You know, so, and I never thought about doing anything with a garden. <laughs> 
And now I'm at the Conservatory School in North Palm Beach. The Palm Beach County School District is fortunate enough to have a grant titled AICP, Art Integration Cohort Project. It allows visiting artists like Graciela to come into our schools and help educate our kids. Graciela Binogi works with kindergarten students at the Conservatory School in North Palm Beach. That was good. Graciela has taught pantomime for over 25 years. Top, side, bottom, flap, flap. We're going to load it with grapefruits. She has the children mime like they're carrying a box, leaning on a box, and opening a box. Graciela's work in the classroom could only be classified as outside the box. My first priority is for children to understand that learning is an adventure. It's like being an explorer all the time. It's just like, it's a process of discovery. Graciela, one of many visiting instructors, paid for through a grant from the U.S. Department of Education to implement the Arts Integration Cohort Project, or AICP. This initiative uses work in the arts to improve student achievement. You're really developing curiosity. And I think if our children are curious, they will want to learn. And the children are having fun. It may look like playtime, but the students are learning concepts like heavy and light, weight and measurements. We're wearing mime, we're wearing weight, we're wearing a lot of cool stuff, which I didn't know before. Just down the hall, another class meets in a circle to study the visual arts. We'll notice that artists and photographers take pictures or make pictures of landforms and they add lots of color. That's what I said. They make it interesting no, and they set up their shot to really show off the setting and the landform. Kindergarten teacher Nicole Ricard has the students study famous artists and photographers. The children then work in groups to recreate the artwork. Kylie, huh? can you make, make some a, a tiger? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm going to make a lion. I'm, okay. the, I'm going to make the blind. These students, through play, are learning about animals, landforms, nature, and climate. Great. Yeah, we think, yeah, we think we're doing like a, a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. A good job with the art and understanding difficult concepts. But learning is much easier when you're just having fun with your friends. Ms. Ricard was introduced to this lesson plan by attending a professional development seminar. Oh, it's making an absolute difference. You know, without this grant, we wouldn't be able to bring in the type of professional development that we do. We bring in National Kennedy Center teaching artists. We work with the Center for Creative Education and bring in LEAP programs and actually into the classroom. And we're also able to actually have staff that works with each school and all of the teachers on a regular and personal basis to walk them through this journey. Some of the professional development is done off campus, in other cases, teachers teaching teachers. You're going to just um, call on kids who haven't had a chance yet. Happens right in the classroom. Marcia Daft is a nationally known arts instructor. She travels across the country introducing innovative techniques to help students learn science and math. I see the fort block. She's a good teacher. Marcia works with the kids. And now it's time for their regular teacher, Mrs. Jacobs, to take over. So, Ms. Marcy and I are tag teaming. Tag team. It's your turn. Oh, and it helps me learn. It helps teach me uh, to teach them. So it's really exciting to have new avenues to work with kids with. Another key component of AICP is technology. The grant pays for iPads to be used inside the schools. Here, dancers create a movement for every letter of the alphabet. The students use the iPads as video cameras to capture the artistry in motion. Students edit right on the iPads and can now showcase their work to young boys and girls in other classes. 
She is the grant manager for AICP. It is Samika Satterthwaite. Good to see you. Nice to see you. It's been fun. We've been in watching the kids in the classrooms, really engaged in some of the activities that the grant is involved in. First of all, explain what AICP is and, and why you're so proud of what you're doing over here. Absolutely. The Arts Integration Cohort Project, AICP, is a grant that we bring to four Title I schools here in the District of Palm Beach County, and we offer them professional development. We offer them experiences to travel to a hands-on arts integration, integration in Washington, D.C., and we also offer them a plethora of technology opportunities to incorporate in the classroom. We have such amazing teachers here in Palm Beach County, but it's wonderful that they're getting some different ideas, thinking outside the box as far as how they can engage their students. Professional development, I know, is a big part of your grant, correct? Absolutely. A huge part of our grant is professional development. Without that professional development, the teachers sometimes feel a little apprehensive about implementing um, arts into their classroom and we take them through the steps of how to do it and we guide them step by step. Well we're seeing lots of smiles and we're seeing a lot of kids engage at the end of the day what do you hope the children how will they benefit from what they're experiencing here? Well we're trying to take the students on a journey of learning and we want them to experience that journey and enjoy it and so we want them to think about things ask questions wonder and we want them to go home and say mom dad or whomever they may be living with guess what I learned today and our arts integration cohort project allows that to happen. A lot of stories at the dinner table tonight because these kids were having a wonderful time. Samika, thank you so much and congratulations on all your great work. Thank you so much. And now I'm at the Murakami Museum in Delray Beach. Today should be the first official vacation day for Palm Beach County school teachers. But for 40 teachers inside the Murakami Museum, they're not enjoying their vacation just yet. It's all about working today, professional development so they can be even better educators. 40 Palm Beach County school teachers participated in the second annual Arts Integration Summer Institute the professional development program, part of AICP, and paid for by the grant from the U.S. Department of Education. The Murakami Museum of Art hosted day one of the four-day event. Oh, we are so grateful to the Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens. If it wasn't for them, we couldn't be in such a wonderful space to inspire the teachers to integrate the arts with their academics. Wendy Lowe, the curator of education at the Murakami Museum, introduced the teachers to Komishibai Storytelling, she was impressed with the teachers who decided to work on the first day of their summer vacation. Oh, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. Um, it, seeing them become kind of like a kid again in the classroom is, is a lot of fun. And if they're enjoying it, I'm pretty sure the kids will love it a hundred times more. Komi Shibai storytelling involves artwork on one side of a card, a written story on the back side of the card. The teacher's creativity really came out with pencils, markers, and paint. The teachers who attended today say they love learning new ways to teach. They don't want to do the same assignment year after year. That would make it very boring. Um, you want to look forward to getting up in the morning just like the kids do. And so I think you keep it fresh and you add new things and the kids see you're excited and it helps them be excited too. These professionals are excited about implementing what they learned in June when they start school in August. Every year is a new year. The students are new and exciting, and I think the teachers try and make the material as exciting as they can. <laughs> Each year it has to be a little different, otherwise it gets boring. These teachers are thankful for the Arts Integration Cohort Project. This grant has given us so many opportunities, so much professional development to, to be here, the master classes, Kennedy Center artists coming in, the technology. Um, we are uh, we're, uh, have two iPad labs now that are at our disposal. Um, and just the, the amount of resources, the amount of time, and, and to really have the opportunity to train our teachers um, in something that we know that works so well. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. It, it is um, an opportunity of a lifetime and we're, we're really excited about having that opportunity. You can see just how much teachers appreciate the AICP because it's making a difference with students. And overall, arts education continues to thrive inside the Palm Beach County school system. Programs. We should be extremely proud. Um, I, I talk to many of my colleagues and I travel throughout the state and I get to see um, what are happen what's happening in other school districts and, and 
we're doing very well. I mean, to have pretty much arts in all of our schools, um, to see um, the passion that our teachers are, are delivering the, 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 the best practices to our students is simply amazing. Uh, I, I don't know if, if any other better district than where we are right now in regards to the success and support that we have from our upper administration with arts education. We really do have some amazing arts programs inside the Palm Beach County school system. And we've been very fortunate here on this show to tell you about these wonderful theater productions, the incredible band performances and the choral concerts featuring these creative, talented students. And of course, they're led by administrators and teachers who put in so much work behind the scenes. Now, speaking of these tireless and talented administrators, recently they held the 2016 Principals Leadership Academy in West Palm Beach. Now, my Education Network colleague, Claudia Shea was there and she files this report. Launch into our second year together as a team. School's out for summer, but the work continues for educators who filled Dreyfus High's auditorium for the 2016 Principals Leadership Academy. Let's welcome our 2016-17 administrative team. This team, which will lead the district's new regional offices, right, guys, joined principals. So if I can have all of our principals please stand up for just one moment and let's all give them a round of applause for their hard work. Assistant principals and other administrators in sharing information needed to move forward with the new strategic plan and its long-term outcomes, including increasing reading on grade level by third grade, ensuring high school readiness, increasing the high school graduation rate, and fostering postgraduate success. I hope that we are moving into a, a new age in education and that new age in education will result greatly from the collective level of passion from the educators in this auditorium and the unwavering support from administrators. We want to make sure that the principals understand our goal is to support them, clear obstacles, make their jobs easier, help them achieve what they want to achieve, but not be intrusive. This two-day academy involves reflecting on successes from the 2016 school year, and breakout sessions offering a clear vision, guidelines, and strategies to achieve even greater equity and excellence in education for all children. It's really to gain energy and start focusing on, okay, what did we do last year? What are areas that we can improve on? And let's begin the work and the planning that's going to carry over into the new year. A new year fueled by a collective passion to define and create the ideal classroom environment and enhance academic success through the district's pillars of effective instruction. We have to have that North Star, that common vision of what we're going to hold our hat on about what is that common vision of effective instruction that will lead us and align all of our work. And the work doesn't stop during the summer, especially for all of the dedicated educators attending the Principal's Leadership Academy. I think the energy from today will really be the springboard for a great year to come. Claudia Shea reporting for the Education Network, keeping you informed. Thanks a lot, Claudia, and great work by the principals. I hope they get some time off this summer. Now let's take a look at social media inside the Palm Beach County school system. We just talked about bands. Well, at Park Vista, they've won several trophies for their fantastic marching band. And they have a lot of fun at the school, too. The band enjoying some water balloon fun. The hashtag is Rookie Camp PV Performers. Members of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office visited the staff at Royal Palm Beach Elementary School to drop off boxes of donated peanut butter and jelly and bread. Thanks to the employees at PBSO, WIRK Radio, and Publix. What are you doing this summer vacation? The Jersa students at Jupiter High School are having a fantastic experience. Now, these are the kids in the wonderful environmental program at Jupiter High. They traveled to Kyoto, Japan to tour the country and to learn about the culture. Now, that's a field trip. The Wellington wrestlers have already started their off-season workouts. They're getting in a good sweat at the Compound College Combine. 
they will begin three days of intensive training. I had a chance to meet Dr. David Alfonso, the new principal at Palm Beach Lakes High School. What a nice man, and he's going to do a great job at that school. On the PB Lakes Twitter account, a welcome to their new principal, hashtag Ram Pride. At Golden Grove Elementary School in Belle Glade, look at the library. The kids are getting into their summer reading program. They're off to a great start. Keep it up. Hashtag Gators Rock. Football players at Olympic Heights High School are getting in better shape over the summer. The boys are excited about the upcoming season. It's all about restore the roar at Olympic Heights. And off-season workouts for the Palm Beach Gardens girls basketball team. These kids working hard in the heat of the summer. It's inspiring. They are at the school by 7 a.m. and they are investing their time, energy, and sweat to improve as athletes. The future authors at Glade Central High School gathered for a group picture. They're heading to Media Day at Don Estridge High Tech Middle School in Boca Raton. Now there's a good-looking group. Elementary school principals from the North Region got together for a picture. And let's finish up at Seminole Ridge High School. The football players participate in something they call the Ridge and Power Program. It's about working hard and working smart. Each athlete gets a baseline time or measurement in a number of exercises and activities. They will be retested in the fall to chart their improvement. And that's going to do it for Good Sports. want to thank you so much for watching. And good luck to the folks over here at Lake Worth Middle School, the people behind the Barry Gruno Memorial Scholarship. If you want to tell us about an outstanding program, team, athlete, coach, administrator, student, drop us an email. The email address is rick, R-I-C, at pbcgoodsports.com. Once again, that email address is rick, R-I-C, at pbcgoodsports.com. We want to thank you so much for watching. To the student athletes inside the Palm Beach County School System, thanks for being good sports.